Last time on this channel, we had ourselves a little look at Compile's Alien Crush, a pretty perfect video pinball game that absolutely destroyed all of its competition back in the day. At least, that's how I see it. This time around, we'll be digging into its PC Engine Turbo Graphics sequel, Devil Crash. Or is it Devil's Crush? No, 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 no. It's, wait, what? Dragon's Fury? Alright, so I guess we're technically comparing three games today, only not really. There are some minor artistic tweaks between Crush and Crash, but these are merely cosmetic. Crush is the North American version, so a lot of the satanic imagery had to be altered in order to preserve our holy innocence. Evidently, it's okay for others to view things like pentagrams and crucifix-carved coffins. So I think it's safe to assume that those who witnessed these blasphemous satanic copies are already in hell. Devil's Crush on the TurboGrafx-16, however, was nicely sanitized for North American audiences by the Witchfinder General himself. None of that devil-worshipping filth over here. We have been cleansed. Well, Captain Marshall, do you now confess? Keep at it, Stan, you're doing God's work. For my money, Alien Crush and these two sequel variants are the pinnacle of video pinball games from this era. If you disagree, let me know in the comments by listing something better. While you're tip-tap typing below, please share a single music track from this generation of consoles that rivals this main table theme. Crush, it was possible to choose between two different audio themes. Devil's Crush only has one, but it's hard to complain when it kicks this much ass. Toshiaki Sakoda knocked it out of the park here. This soundtrack is his best in my humble opinion, and that's saying something considering how amazing his body of work is. Devil Crush plays a bit differently than Alien Crush, but at the core it follows the same beats. Smash shit up, get those points, and try to earn that high score. Bonus rooms are back, and as great a diversion as ever, the physics are once again perfect, and there are heaps of new enemies to roll over. Instead of an alien inspiration, this sequel opts for straight-up demonic horror, with spooky skeletons, hooded worshippers, and Lovecraftian monsters. There's more on screen than ever before, with a ton of variety. Some medieval creatures appear as well, for whatever reason. Knights, dragons, monks, everything fits, and the animations are great all around. The bright flashing lights make it feel more like a traditional pinball table. The added glitz and glamour complements the entire aesthetic. It's all meticulously crafted and gives the game an authentic, organic feel. The controls are tight and there's enough visual variety to hold your attention for hours at a time. Fortunately, you won't need to sit in front of your CRT for long stretches since Devil's Crush tossed in a password feature. Personally, I didn't have a problem with the lack of this option in Alien Crush because I prefer starting each session fresh. 
fresh, but the inclusion of a password here is undoubtedly better. At the very least, it gives the player a fighting chance to see those end credits. If you're like me and choose not to use it, that's a route you can take as well. More options are always better. Devil's Crush is a bit more challenging than its predecessor in my opinion, with so many obstacles in the way it's much easier for the ball to ricochet almost violently all over the table. It's generally well balanced, but similarly to Alien Crush, there is one thing that prevents this from being a perfect game, and it is an issue across all versions, including the Sega port. And no, it isn't the screen snap because that has thankfully been fixed. Everything scrolls smoothly, vertically, across all three areas here. My problem with this one is how eager it is to fire you directly down in the hole every opportunity it gets. Down in the hole. Down in the hole. Down in the hole. There were some bonus rooms that launched my ball straight into the gutter with absolutely no chance. I know this because I'm emulating the Japanese version since it is a wallet buster, and I don't own it. I did a bit of clever save state tomfoolery to respawn myself over and over in an attempt to test this thing out. The game literally fires your ball directly into the nearest hole when you spawn into the room at times. Nothing can prevent it. As I mentioned, all versions are guilty of this, but the PC Engine and Turbo Graphics variants are the most egregious culprits. Dragon's Fury on the Sega hardware is a bit more forgiving, but it still happens far more than it should. Alien Crush had the choppy transitions, and this sequel has this nasty little habit of dunking you without a chance in hell to straighten yourself out. Neither are game-breaking issues, but in my opinion, they do hold them back from being perfect. And that's okay, because I still think they are the best at what they do. There are tons of oversized demons to contend with, both in and out of bonus rooms. This lovely lady's head becomes more and more ghastly as you work your ball into it. Her transformation starts out slowly as you chip away at her skin to reveal the horrors that lie beneath. It's great stuff, and the bonus rooms include some pretty colorful beasts as well, and there are a lot more of them this time around to boot. Clearing one of these rooms offers the player a temporary ball buff, which sounds pretty sensual all around. But while you're in this mode, the points double with each impact. In the previous entry, the bonus rounds would be the same handful of stages every time, but in this game, they get more challenging upon completion, with added pits and extra paddles. It's definitely more engaging as you accumulate those sweet, sweet points. Ball buffs. There are plenty of things to interact with on the main board, including doors that can be destroyed to unleash new baddies, and a pentagram room filled with cloaked necromancers. Devil's Crush is an absolute delight. It's as great as its predecessor and does what any good sequel should. If it weren't so adamant about stuffing me into every nearby pit, it would be perfect. The game was ported to the Genesis the following year as Dragon's Fury and the Mega Drive under the title Devil Crash MD in Japan by Technosoft. All of these North American versions are censored. The general was added again, and the changes are all rather trivial, but it still annoys me a tiny bit. Though the action is fast, so it's tough to get too worked up over objects you'll only see briefly. The pentagram thing is pretty silly, but these alterations aren't as distracting as those from the TurboGrafx port of Splatterhouse, a game I've already reviewed, so go check that out for even more Halloween fun. All in all, the Sega port is equally as great and a worthy alternative if you have no means of playing the TurboGrafx version. It's also far less expensive, since people actually owned the Genesis over here in North America. The visuals are nice, but everything looks a little flatter, muddy even. The Sega system can't display as many colors as the Turbo, and it definitely shows here. On the plus side, the Genesis has a higher resolution, so there's more on screen, including a handy bonus stage taskbar that is always present. I dig the visuals here. There are a lot more textures and details in Dragon's Fury, but personally, I find them a tad distracting at times, especially on the main table, which is now a lot more busy to look at. 
Part of the reason I enjoy the TurboGrafx original is due to how everything pops. It's colorful and all of the backgrounds seem deliberately designed in such a way that makes it easy to always follow your ball. This largely boils down to preference, but the Sega alternative can look murky at times, and I feel the fluidity suffers a bit as a result. That being said, there are some truly inspired backgrounds going on in Dragon's Fury that look absolutely gorgeous, so it's kind of a mixed bag. On one hand, I prefer the simplicity of the TurboGrafx game's main table. On the other, I like the details drawn in this one's bonus stages. Technosoft did a stellar job porting this thing over. The action feels identical with the same tight gameplay and table feel all around. All of the bonus stages have been redrawn, and some have been altered completely, which definitely kept me on my toes. Despite the differences, all of the levels feel like they belong, which is a testament to the developers who brought this thing over. Clearly they cared about the source material and wanted to create a worthy alternative to the TurboGrafx experience. It really shows. They didn't let hardware restrictions stand in their way, and that should be commended. There are different ways to complete the Sega version as well. The original works the same as Alien Crush, meaning it's score-based. In Dragon's Fury, it's possible to unlock a seventh bonus stage after completing the initial six. This sounds simple, but these rooms are pretty tricky to locate in either version, and launching your ball into these levels can be challenging as well. To be honest, I don't really have a preference. Both games are worth playing in general, so these changes are rather trivial in my eyes. Devil's Crush and Dragon's Fury are the best video pinball experiences for their respective hardware, so either one is worth your time. There are a few extra music tracks from other Technosoft properties locked behind passwords, which is a strange, albeit harmless, inclusion. Toshiaki Sakoda's score returns with that charming Yamaha synth sound this time around. I prefer the Turbo's music and sound effects overall, but this alternative certainly is no slouch in the audio department. The main difference with video pinball games from this era and the real thing is the inherent lack of analog control. Unlike a real table, the player lacks that tangible grip. In these crush games, you can jostle the table with the press of a button, however, it's pretty much all or nothing when you use the flippers. I find it a bit easier to balance the ball and toy with it on the paddles in this sequel, compared to Alien Crush, but all of these games do a great job making up for their inherent limitations by having good stage designs. As is the case with most of Sega's games, there is a loaded option screen to mess around in, all of the buttons can be reconfigured, and there's a full music sampler here as well. Both games have a new alternating two-player mode, which is fine, I guess, but I've never been a fan of taking turns with a friend in any game. It's a nice addition for those who don't mind waiting around, and I suppose it could be fun to compare high scores, but a head-to-head -head mode would have been better. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter which one of these games you play. Devil Crash, Devil's Crush, Dragon's Crash Crush, Fury, Devil Fury, Devil's Crush Crash, Fury Dragon. They're all amazing. The graphics are superb across the board, and the soundtrack is a masterpiece. Sure, things can get a bit weird sometimes with how often this game wants to dunk you, but this cruel oversight is a mere blemish on the face of an almost masterpiece. Devil's Crush and Dragon's Fury were built on top of a very strong foundation. There are some days I prefer the simplicity of the first game in the series, Alien Crush, but other times I tend to opt for one of these devilishly delicious sequels. They are all top-notch pinball alternatives for the home market that I can't recommend enough. The series would see a sequel in 1992 exclusively for the Super Famicom, so next time we will conclude the Crush trilogy. 
with that entry. So stay tuned. You took him from me! 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 You took him from